I've had this conversation with a bunch of people and my basic premise is that I refuse to believe in things that take power away from me. Mm. If if you are in a haunted house and you believe in ghosts, you're scared of the haunted house. If you're in a haunted house and you don't believe in ghosts, you're just in a house mm. and you don't care. So I don't like the idea when someone explains to me the idea of one day waking up and being miserable and not wanting to live anymore and it's nothing to do with my circumstances and I have no power over it and no matter how good my life is, I'm still going to feel terrible and I'm going to want to die. That's not an idea I subscribe to. Feeling yeah. depressed mm. is real. Yeah. Depression as a disease, I do not subscribe to. The idea, I believe that if you feel depressed, something is depressing you mm. and you should try your best to fix it. You should take control of your life and do your best to fix it. The idea, yeah. but they don't say that. They don't talk that. They say depression like it's this magic thing that comes out the sky mm. and it gets in your brain. You're sad no matter what. And there's nothing you can do about it and you need to only take pills. And I think that's a very bad way to look at the world. And that's a bad idea to subscribe to. And if you start to feel depressed, let's say your girl leaves you and you start to feel depressed, but you believe in the idea of depression, you're now going to start diagnosing yourself as clinically depressed, yeah. self-hypnosing yourself into hypnotizing yourself into being clinically depressed. And, and it's amazing how you can speak things into existence. I cannot become depressed because I don't believe in it. So, so how, how about chemical imbalances in the brain? Bullshit. That's all been disproved anyway. <laughs> really? So it's all, it's all been disproved. Firstly, that's all been disproved. And secondly, even if that was true, even if I had a chemical imbalance in my brain, I do not believe in depression. That's just who I am as a person. I don't believe in it. I do not believe in things that take power away from me. So, I, I'm, and people sit there and they try very hard to convince me it's real, which is actually quite interesting because it's always usually depressed people who sit there and try very hard to defend this idea. If you're so scared, if depression's so terrible, why are you sticking up for it? Why are you fighting so hard to convince me it's such a, it's such a powerful force? Why shouldn't you be doing the opposite? Shouldn't you be listening to me? Whose team are you on? Like, do you want to be depressed? Like, it, mm. it's insanity. These people who are so desperate to push this idea. Then you add in the pharmaceutical element and the fact that everyone's taking these fucking drugs messing mm. with their brain chemistry. It's garbage. I think that you feel depressed sometimes because you're human. So let's look at it. Let's let's pretend I'm completely wrong, right? It was, we, we can look at situational depression like you just described. We can talk about brain uh, imbalance and chemical imbalance. We can talk about clinical depression that you get and it's chronic and there's nothing you do about it. Whatever. Let's pretend all these things are completely true. The best option, the best thing to do is still to get up, be an adult, control your emotions, be stoic and do the things you're supposed to do day after day. Laying in bed and doing nothing is never going to be the best option. The best option yeah. is still to go to the gym, to work hard, to run your business, to be successful. So it doesn't matter. We're talking about the different positions on the chessboard. But if the rules of the game remain the same, regardless of the position you're still trying to win, you, you still have to do the same things. So does it even matter at this mm -hmm. point? If you come along and say he's depressed because of X and he's depressed because of Y and he's depressed because of Z, and the answer to all of them is still the same thing, then I don't give a fuck why you're depressed. All I know, what I will state as a matter of fact, is this world is hyper competitive, especially as a man. Mm -hmm. Most men are walking through life and they don't realize that it's constant competition. Mm -hmm. I was driving here. Even as I was driving here, I was looking out the window. I was looking at all these people just walking around. One of them had a fucking croissant. One of them was dressed like a dickhead because it's London. He thinks he fucking looks cool. He's a fucking moron. We've all seen them. Yep, moron. <laughs> Some of the dude just talking shit on the phone. Some other guy with headphones in waiting to be fucking murdered. Wouldn't even hear it coming. And all these NPCs, I'm just looking at them going, do they realize they're in endless, constant competition? Every single pound they want, someone else wants. Every single girl they want, someone else wants. There are people like me out here. I will destroy. You could get all 30 of them in a room and I will sit by myself and absolutely annihilate them in any single metric. And they're just sitting there just fucking floundering and wandering through life, unaware of how competitive the world is. Well, and whinging how unfair and it is. And whinging how unfair it is. And this is my point. If the world is truly that competitive, you do not have time to be depressed because it's a non-competitive mind state. Mm. I, you can be depressed for X, Y, Z, whatever. I'm not depressed. And I want the money you want and I want the girl you want and I want the status you want and the car you want and the house you want. And I'm going to get it and you're fucking not. What I'm saying is you're playing a game and it's a competitive game and you need to build a mindset that allows you to be ultra competitive. And if you want to sit there and say, no, I want a non-competitive mindset, then fine. You know what you call people who do not win competitions? Losers. Correct. <laughs> Dad, well, used we... to, Dad used to call, uh, said when, when I came second, he was like, second is the first loser. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. And it, it's just a bottom line of life. And, mm. and it's kind of interesting because everyone pretends they give a fuck, but nobody does, mm. especially women. And I know I get attacked for women, but women truly don't give a fuck. If you ask a woman the kind of man she wants, she will never say depressed or sad ever. Mm. She wants a man who is ultra capable, ultra competent. I, I've literally had women say to me, you know what? I love being around you. Like, what? I don't have to think. I'm like, what do you mean? Because I just turn up and like, we just walk in the hotel and everyone, staff do anything we want and the jet's just on the runway and we just land and I'm in this beautiful place and I don't even know where I am and I get to just turn my brain off and it's great. Like they want someone who is fun and spontaneous and charismatic and successful. They don't have time for sad dudes. They don't care. So the world doesn't care. The world has never given a shit about sad men. So if you're going to sit there and self diagnose yourself as a sad man, you're going to have a shit life and nobody's ever going to give a fuck.
luck and you're going to perpetually lose forever. And that is your decision. I am so scared of being that person. The idea of that terrifies me to the point where I don't even want to accept that as a reality that can possibly exist. I don't give a shit what happens to me in my life. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care if the worst, most heinous things I can possibly imagine happen to me. I know that my sadness, my depression will be temporary because I will never stay a loser. It's against my creed. It's not in my DNA.